All right, back to the video. All right, the, you're looking at a legit. I'm sorry, it cut off. You're looking at a legit pennant race if the Yankees manage to blow five. It cut off, okay? Yeah. You look at a pennant race and you you manage to blow. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, the Yankees managed to lose five out of six hypothetically to the Rays. Then your lead in the loss column goes down to two. And we all know that the Rays have played the Yankees tremendously over the last couple years. Yankees might have a slightly better than average record against the against the Tampa Rays this season, but they look like the chief competition with the way the Blue Jays are kind of tanking at this point. They've lost four in a row, and they, they're just very, very inconsistent. The Baltimore Orioles are an upstart and a nice story, but I don't think they're a threat to the division title at this point. They only play the Yankees three more times in Yankee Stadium, I believe. and the Boston Red Sox have been left for dead. They're the only team in the division with a losing record. You know my postulate on the Red Sox. You either get first place or last place. It doesn't really differentiate. I mean, but all right, here's what we got to do. We got to come up with a lineup that's sustainable. And I would hit Ben Intendi at the top and I would follow him with Judge. Then I would back Judge up with a lefty probably process of elimination going to be Rizzo and he's got to have better at bats then we'll hit Stanton fourth and then the rest of the order will kind of do piecemeal but they've got to get better starting pitching they've got to get better performance from their bullpen and they've had their share of injuries starting with Chad Green moving over to guys like the guy they got from the Mets Miguel Castro and he also had an injury to uh, Jonathan Loisica, and he hasn't been quite the same. It's been a difficult season, but the first half makes it not be an extension of last season. So can you be optimistic? I don't know. We're going to see what happens, and we'll take it from there. Let's turn to the other team in town, the New York Mets. The Mets have been on fire for the better part of this season. They've gotten very clutch performances from Mark Canna. An MVP season from Pete Alonso, if not for the fact that Paul Goldschmidt is on the verge of winning the Triple Crown in the National League, which would be for the first time a National Leaguer has won the Triple Crown since Joe Medwick in 1936. Yeah, if that name sounds familiar, I'm from his hometown. Isn't that cool? A Cardinal could win the Triple Crown, and a Cardinal won it. Of course, Joe Medwick is notorious for telling the Pope, I played for the Cardinals. I knew all the Cardinals. Well, you didn't know the religious Cardinals, buddy. Okay? You were a little bit rough around the edges, but you had a great career. Uh, but the Mets have gotten great starting pitching. Even if you throw out Scherzer and DeGrom, who have been on the disabled list, Chris Bassett has had a nice year. David Peterson has been an outstanding contributor. And lest we forget the performance of Edwin Diaz, who's been, bar none, the best closer in baseball this year. I know Met fans wanted to vilify the guy a couple years ago after he blew a bunch of saves. I was out in Pittsburgh last year, a game where he blew. But, you know, the, the Mets kind of had that coming to them. They gave up five runs in the seventh and eighth innings okay so basically they, they, they had that coming to them but the Mets look like they're in good shape I'm not sure what their schedule looks like going down the stretch but they might have Atlanta a couple more times or they might be done with Atlanta let's actually call that up and see for clarification The Mets, I'm looking at their schedule now. Okay. They may be done with Atlanta. They have the Dodgers for a three-game series. Yeah, I'll, I grant you, it's a huge series. Don't get me wrong. But the Mets have to have their eyes on the prize, which is the National League East title and the second seed. All right, the Dodgers are playing at an all-world record, and they're going to finish first in the league. But there's no shame in finishing second. And I'm looking at this Mets schedule, and there's a lot of 
Nationals, Pirates, Marlins, Pirates again. All right, they go to Milwaukee for three. They go out to Oakland. They host Miami. Towards the end of the season, they play Atlanta in Atlanta, and then they finish up with the Nationals. There's no reason why this Buck Showalter team can't win the division. In fact, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna be the number two seed, and I honestly think they might be as good of a bet as any to win the National League pennant. And let's now focus on the Philadelphia Fighting Phils. This is the third team. All right. Yeah, I'm a North Jersey boy by trade. But don't get me wrong. I moved to South Jersey, and I do follow the Phils. They got off to a rough start against a rough schedule to start the year. Joe Girardi was forced to walk the plank. Robbie Thompson has done a great job managing the Phillies. He's kept things even keel. Meanwhile, the bullpen is stabilized with their strength in numbers. They've had contributions from guys like Sir Anthony Dominguez, Brad Hand, uh, Connor Brogdon, et al. David Robertson, a recent trade acquisition. Alec Bohm has really stepped up his game. You know, let's not forget that Bryce Harper injury. It was grisly. But it's kind of an inspiration to have him back in the order. Granted, they lost last night 12-7 to to Arizona. They blew a 7 to nothing lead. But Aaron Nola could be the momentum breaker. You can take momentum, Bobby Valentine once said, and he's totally right. You can take momentum and push it as far as the next day's starting pitcher. So if Nola's on and Zach Gallen is slightly off, the Phillies should be able to get a win tonight in the desert and be able to right the ship. They've only lost two in a row, but they've been great since Girardi's firing, and they sit as the second wild card. And I don't see them improving off of that. However, the Milwaukee Brewers and the San Diego Padres are both struggling. And how ironic is it that they made a deal Josh Hader goes from Milwaukee to San Diego, and immediately Hader just hits the skids. I looked at his numbers. It, it, they are grizzly. He's got a 6.52 ERA for the season. That is insane, considering what he was. But sometimes those relievers, particularly the lefties, they'll struggle with their mechanics, and that'll affect their command beyond belief. So. The Phillies are sitting pretty right now, unless they hit the swoon in September, which they've done the last couple years. Now, let's look at their remaining schedule to see what they have. I know it probably a little more than the Mets, but I am going to look at it just to make sure we know what's going on. All right, they go to San Francisco. They've struggled this year. They host Miami and Washington. They get Miami again on the road, and then they finish with them. They do have six games left with the Braves before they go into Wrigley Field and D.C. And they end the season with three games against the hated Houston Astros. All right, there's some pockets in that schedule that could cause a problem. But the Phillies, with their pitching, should be fine. Zach Wheeler did go on the D.L., it looks like it's going to be a minimal stay, at least if you're a Philly fan, you hope. And you just hope the bats do enough. And you hope Houston has everything clinched for those last three games. Of course, I don't hope being I'm a Yankee fan, but from the Philly standpoint, that would benefit them if Houston is just playing, you know, Joe Schmo in the last three games because they've got the entire American League locked up. So, basically... I think you're looking at a wild card spot, probably at worst the third one, and probably at best the second one. We're going to grant Atlanta, who's been on fire ever since they got off to that bad start. And some of their guys came out a little hurt. Charlie Morton has struggled early. Ronald Acuna was hurt. Matt Olson was acclimating to Atlanta. But Austin Riley has had an MVP season, and they've brought up guys like Michael Harris. Spencer Strider, who's been a godsend in the rotation. And the Braves have basically been business as usual. And I wouldn't expect that to 
stop. So the Braves are going to finish probably with that first wild card. And the, that would put them in a bracket with the Dodgers, interestingly enough, in a division series. Meanwhile, the Mets would get potentially St. Louis to start or whoever they play in their division series. So we're going to see what happens. This is going to be very interesting as we go forward. All right. We're going to turn to the other sport. We're going to turn to football in a second. All right. And I've got some things to say. And I'm not going to be too mean when it comes to people. But at this point, I am a Jet fan and I am tired. I am tired of losing and I am tired, really tired of this get the quarterback hurt in preseason create negative momentum to start the season, and you're saying, what the heck? All right, so I sit down to watch the Jets-Eagles preseason game. It's the first preseason game. I don't expect to see much. So Zach Wilson starts out by throwing an interception, which the Eagles did a pretty substantial return on, and they score a touchdown. Then Zach Wilson decides to tuck the ball in and run. And his leg turns funny on the turf at Lincoln Financial Field. And he's hurt. His knee is hurt. So preliminary indications were that it was a torn ACL and that he was going to be out for the season. The Jets did catch a break there. And that Wilson just has merely a torn meniscus in his knee and some bone bruise. That's definitely... A good thing when you're looking at a quarterback, you're hoping that second year he makes the leap. Carson Wentz was an MVP candidate before he went down with his knee injury, and then he was never quite the same. Your hope for the Jets is that you get Wilson back week two, week three, and that he's ready to go. Yes, the roster has improved by virtue of the draft. Sauce Gardner has brought personality, and I think his play is going to match his bite. Yeah, cornerback is a tough position to learn in the NFL. You've got to learn technique, and there's a lot less that you could do than you used to do. However, the Jets also added Carl Lawson, who was out for the season last year. He tears his Achilles. There goes that preseason injury again. Uh, they've also added Quan Alexander, Jordan Whitehead from Tampa Bay, and DJ Reed. Yes. There is reason to be optimistic about the defense. Robert Sala's all gas, no break mentality really has to work here because the Jets open up in the gauntlet of the AFC North. They get the Baltimore Ravens at home to start the season, who will be fired up. Lamar Jackson is trying to earn a new contract. Then they go to Cleveland to play the Browns in their home opener, which is interesting because Deshaun Watson is going to be suspended for a total of 11 games for being a serial sexual offender. You know, it's disappointing when athletes do things like that. But nothing surprises me anymore. I mean, he's the golden boy who comes out of Clemson, and he basically decides, okay, I'm going to play. I'm going to play for Houston. I have a career. He even signed a contract there. Meanwhile, once these allegations came out, he was unhappy. So he kind of weaseled his way out, and he got $240 million on his way out the door from the Cleveland Browns. Well, I hope the Browns are a dumpster fire this year. I really do. I hope they lack continuity. Whatever happens to them happens, because there's no moral compass in that organization. They have no chance to earn any capital with me after they put all their eggs in that basket. And they basically altered the way quarterback contracts will be reworded. So back to the Jets' schedule. They they continue that gauntlet with the Bengals at home. All right, the Bengals are the defending AFC champions. Do we expect them to win it again? Maybe, maybe not, but definitely a tough game. And then they go to Pittsburgh, which has always been a house of horrors for the Jets, to whatever they call that new stadium, Akershore Stadium. It's not a new stadium, but they renamed it because the Heinz Field contract ran out. But, yeah, you're going to get Mitchell Trubisky or Kenny Pickett at quarterback, yes. 
but you're also going to get Mike Tomlin. You're also going to get T.J. Watt. Do I think that's going to be an easy game? Absolutely not. Now, do I think they're going to be 0-4 with their roster? Probably not. But if I had to put an over-under on the number of wins for the Jets, I'd have to say one and a half at the most out of the last four, out of the first four. The Jets continued his gauntlet with Miami at home. They've added Tariq Hill. Of course, Tua Tagovailo is the most scrutinized player in the league now that they've added Tyreek Hill and they've got these weapons and they've installed the San Francisco zone scheme. Okay, we'll see what we get out of them. The Dolphins have a competitive defense. The Jets could win that game. They could lose that game. But then they go to Green Bay and Denver back to back. Those games are going to be tough. Aaron Rodgers is going to be tremendously motivated to prove that he was he, he had more than just Devontae Adams, and I guarantee you he will. Russell Wilson is now out in Denver and has weapons at his hands. We're not looking at Seattle Redux there. In Week 8, they host the hated Patriots, and in Week 9, they host the Bills. So, life as a Jets fan. I would like to think they could get four wins there, but again, history has told me that they won't. We'll see. We're going to give Robert Sala and his staff a chance. We're going to give Joe Douglas a chance to prove what he can do. Maybe he'll even have some answers for this roster, which is lacking depth and some personnel and some key positions, particularly on the back end of the defense. Offensive line depth is clearly an issue. So let's just hope for no injuries and that the team stabilizes. On to the New York football Giants, and I haven't followed them as closely. The unfortunate thing is they lost their third-round pick to a torn ACL. They lost Kayvon Thibodeau to an MCL sprain. He was their first-round pick. They should be better than they were last year, just based on the fact that the coach is an adult in the room, which could be the first time I can say that since they had Tom Coughlin as their coach. I respect Brian Dayball. I did not respect Joe Judge. How do you treat athletes like a bunch of little kids and talk to them like they're six years old? When you haven't even played in the NFL and you've done nothing more than basically screw around, you know, all right, you're a New England assistant. All right, that's great. How many Belichick assistants have come off the tree and actually been successful? I think the most successful examples were Bill O'Brien in, in Houston until he decided to get control of personnel and Eric Mangini with the Jets until he decided that he had to be a cheap imitation of Coach Belichick. It worked in New England because Belichick could flash the, the brass rings. It's not going to work trying to be a cheap imitation of the guy. Belichick has a sense of humor. Belichick is a hell of a coach. He got a raw deal in Cleveland years ago when he got fired after the team kind of checked out when the team announced its move. But the Giants' schedule looks pretty manageable. If they can keep Daniel Jones healthy and get something out of that receiving core. Now, Kenny Galladay is clearly on the outs with the fan base. They are not happy with him. But the Giants should get some production out of Saquon Barkley, if healthy. Their offensive line should be better. It can't be any worse than it was. And you've got some manageable games early on. Yeah, you go to Tennessee in week one, and you're facing the vaunted Derrick Henry. But you got Carolina coming in. That's a question mark, considering they've got Baker Mayfield at quarterback. And I think he did a courageous job in Cleveland, playing on a torn labrum in his shoulder. The Cowboys are week three. That's always a tough game, but I tend to think Dallas will be favored despite their personnel deficiencies. Then the Bears are a manageable game at home, but then they go to London to play Green Bay, and they play the Ravens after that, and then they go to the Jaguars, which will be a tough game too, considering they've got Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence. And then they go to Seattle, never an easy stop, despite the fact the Seahawks look to be scrambling this year. And then they've got the Houston Texans. So 
this is a manageable schedule. It's far easier than what the Jets are playing against. But And I think they could squeeze together a couple wins, especially if new defensive coordinator Don Wink Martindale could basically decide, okay, I'm going to come out of the bus blitzing. And that's what struggling defenses have a tendency to do. All right, they are personnel deficient, but Martindale alone can win them a game or two, I think, out of those first 10, which would probably put them at four wins, maybe five wins, best case scenario. Giants do have two games with the Commanders and the Eagles in the second half of the season, so if they get to that point, they probably bear watching. We'll see. Now we'll switch to the birds of a different feather, the Philadelphia Eagles. I think this is going to be a big season for them. If Jalen Hurts can even be half the man he's projected to be. The Eagles have the best offensive line coach and the best offensive line in football, without a doubt. They just are a lineman factory. Jordan Mailata at left tackle. You've got Lane Johnson at right tackle. Jason Kelsey at center, assuming he's healthy. But then they took the kid from Nebraska at center. That team is definitely, without a doubt, in very good shape. And they even have depth along the offensive line. Now, their defensive line looks like it could be disruptive with Brandon Graham coming back. With the draft pick, Jordan Davis, stopping the run. Maybe Fletcher Cox will come in motivated. And they've improved their secondary with the addition of the guy from the Saints today. In addition to James Bradbury, who they got from the Giants. Not to mention, they got Jalen Hurts another toy. They got him A.J. Brown from Tennessee. Awesome. They are looking good. Now, can Nick Sirianni handle prosperity? We're going to learn that. The schedule is very friendly to the Eagles this year, too. They open up with Detroit, Minnesota. I got to see what else they've got. And I'll give you that real quick. I don't like to play this win-loss game, win -loss game, but sometimes you kind of have to do it. Things can change. It's when you play them, not who you play. All right, they go to Washington. They get Jacksonville at home. All right, they go out to the desert week five to play Arizona. That's a tough game. When then Dallas comes calling on a Sunday night, then they get their bye, then they get the Steelers, and then they go to Houston. The Eagles should get off to a pretty good start, assuming they stay healthy. The team is strong, at least on the offense and defensive sides of the ball. I think the man who's under the most pressure this year, other than Hurts, is defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon. How is he going to use this personnel? That he's this infusion of personnel that he's got. We're gonna see. I think it could be an interesting year in Philadelphia this year. And I think the Eagles not only can contend for the division, I think they could contend for the Super Bowl out of an NFC that's relatively weak compared to the AFC. I will do another sports podcast within the next week or so. Again, I'm a novice at this. I have no notes. I've kind of just done everything by the seat of my pants. Yeah, I could do things a certain way and people might not like it or I could come with notes. But this one, I kind of just wanted to do impromptu and speak from the heart. I do think the Yankees need to get it going. I think they need to get it going now. I think they they run the danger of Aaron Judge not seeing another meaningful pitch the rest of the season if this keeps up. I think the Mets are in the driver's seat, as are the Phillies for the second wild card. I think the Jets could have a rough season given their schedule, despite the personnel improvements that they made. I think there is a window for the Giants to win some games. They could also go belly up. And it's going to be an interesting season at the link for the Eagles. I think they could win 10, 11, maybe 12 games, depending on how everybody else looks. All right. I will see you guys next week.
We'll have further baseball recap. We'll try to get a hold of how Rutgers football is making out. We'll take a look at the first week of college football. And we'll also preview the first week of the NFL season, mainly the Jets, Giants, and Eagles games. Eagles open up at Ford Field against Detroit. The Jets open up at home against the Baltimore Ravens. And the Giants go to Nashville to face the Tennessee Titans. Again, it's been my pleasure. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I will enjoy doing this and we'll have fun with it. Again, watch Anastasia's videos too. They're kind of fun. I bid you goodbye. Have a good day, a good night, and stay safe. Stay healthy.